Hello again, and welcome to episode number 106 of the Your Best Kept Business Secret podcast. I am Mark Ford, coach, author, and editor at Your Best Kept Business Secret, helping you with the business that your hard work truly deserves. And it's actually great to be with you almost at the end of this year, my friends. We are almost there, the end of 2020, the year that we all hope to forget for one reason or another. But despite the global bastard, the end of the year means something a little bit different to me. It's honestly, for me, it's a really nice time of year for me to kind of just reflect because I do genuinely take about two weeks off over the Christmas period. And so I do a lot of reflection, you know, I also do a lot of reading. And this year, as many as you know, if you've been following me on Twitter and Instagram at Mark Ford, get it sorted. If you're not already there, you'll see that I've also reignited a bit of a passion of mine through lockdown this year, which is cartooning. I used to do an awful lot of cartooning in my teens and 20s, but... uh, through my 30s and 40s till now, I've done basically no sketching other than just sort of like doing that stuff on your knees with Kieran many years ago. But yeah, I got a little bit bored through lockdown and I thought I've got to do something, something different, something creative and started cartooning again and I'm really enjoying it. It's kind of, it's kind of pretty therapeutic. So I'm going to be doing a lot of reading, I'm going to be doing cartooning, I'm going to be listening to lots and lots and lots of music through Spotify and I'm going to be doing lots of reflection over the next few weeks as well as I'm sure many of you guys are going to be doing as well. However, sticking with what's going on right now, the one thing that I'm really excited about right now, you may or may not be aware of this, but I now have opened up the doors to next year's coaching and mastermind groups. So if you're wanting to make 2021 really truly count, genuinely count, I'd love to see you on the inside of those groups next year. We've got some great stuff planned. In fact, actually, We're putting our foot down on the gas more than ever because our main focus points here are three or four things that you need to do in order to experience some real growth in your business and get the business that your hard work truly deserves. You really do need to plan to grow first. And from our very first call together, if you were to come and join us in those masterminds, you're going to see that very, very clearly that we're going to help you get the plan and the growth in your business for 2021. Now, the second thing is it's kind of a real hardcore focus. As a group, super consistent, super non-stop ongoing focus, and you and your plans really executing those plans because if you want to build and grow a profitable business that consists, that constant focus needs to be super, super clear and needs to be there. And then the last thing is that you're going to surround yourself with some real like-minded people because my friend, you cannot do this on your own forever. So if you've got stuck a little bit this year as a business owner, you want to get unstuck and get tired and going it alone you want to be with world-class action taken by coach somebody who really does give a damn i.e me hello i'd love to see you on the masterminds next year so all you've got to do is just head over to markford.uk and you'll see work with me click on the masterminds find out how to secure your spot and like i said we're bringing people right on the board for 2021 right now so go and check it out uh, and i look forward to seeing you there i'm working with you closely throughout the course of 2021 however however today though I want to kind of zoom in a little bit and get you ready, so to speak, for 2021 with the 10 things that you absolutely must do going into next year. These are 10 super important things about yourself and your business that if you don't have a handle on on these, you've got no chance of hitting any of your goals and getting to that level of success you really want for next year. You know what they say, they say knowledge is power. Well, it's not unless you do something with it. So we need to take a few things, take a look at a few things to give you the knowledge so you can take action and some important steps going into 2021. Let's get going and let's roll those titles. All right, so the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to need a pen and paper or an iPad or whatever, a note catching device of some kind, okay? Because we're going to go and I'm going to be asking you some questions here and prompting you to think about these 10 things that you need to do. You've got to have these under your belt going into next year. So number one, first and foremost, is actually I'd like you to sit down and genuinely describe your current business model and just your business model in general, right? So what what is it, what does it look like? What sort of stuff are you selling? How are you making your money on that kind of stuff? So that's just the first thing, it's basically just a bit of a description. So and you know it's not necessarily an elevator pitch per se, but a bit of a description 
on what your business is all about, how you're making your money currently. So that is number one out of the ten. Number two, and I want you to also physically write out and describe your perfect customer in as much detail as you possibly can. And we've gone through this stuff before on this show in terms of you know developing your customer avatars and things like that. The actual fact of the matter is the more you know your perfect customer as intimately as possible in terms of their situations, the age group, the experience levels, the income and all these other things, the more you intimately know your perfect customer, the more chances you have got of actually building a business to serve them properly, but will also obviously turn you into a profitable business owner. So that is the second thing, is to really think about your perfect customer and get that description down on paper as well. And remember, nothing's finite here, right? Like we can change these things and you know remain flexible with a lot of this stuff as we go through into 2021. So that is number one and number two. Now, number three. Now, three is that I want you to note down the exact number, the exact number for your total revenue from 2020. Exactly. How much money did your business bring in this year? And then following on from that, yeah, the next thing, number four is a percentage. How much of your revenue came from your online activities? Now, I ask this question just because you know, a lot of community both have online stuff that they do so online courses and all that kind of stuff and they also have maybe some in-person stuff like coaching and things like that uh, that they offer their customers as well so it's also because so many people got swayed into thinking that everything I mean everything was going online and here's the thing not everything that is online works see big events workshops After the initial hubbub, they kind of haven't worked. No one wants to sit in front of a screen for a day or two days. Sales of online events have been in the main pool. So you need to understand possibilities and potential streams of income without throwing all your eggs into one basket. So when I say online sales, I mean sort of directly stuff that you know, products that you're selling directly on the internet, delivered digitally, is important because that's where your passive income is. Ultimately, you don't really need to do anything for that kind of revenue. Now, as a percentage from your total revenue, What did you bring in from online sales? Specifically then, the next number, and I I think this is number five of our list of ten. Number five is to jot down exactly what your total costs were for 2020. So all of your outgoings, every single thing. So everything from your post-it notes, your Sharpies, your stationery, right the way down to travel, staffing, all that stuff, write everything. And if you want to, you can actually kind of include your tax payouts on this as well. So it gives you a true net. Write down that net number and put it over there. Right, so now, total costs. Number six, I think I'm right in saying this is six. Yeah, number six. Six is here to jot down what your top three sources were for costs. Now, for most people, this would be staffing, or it could be potentially for rental if they have physical presence, and maybe it's you know legal fees or accounting fees and that type of thing. So whatever, or actually maybe ads. You know, a lot of people are doing an awful lot of paid ads at the moment. So, what are your top three cost sources from this year as well? Now, I want you to take a little bit of a break here before I get into the last few. And the reason why I'm asking all these questions of you is because if you don't know the numbers inside of your business, there is no way you can coherently and genuinely actually focus on building a business that your hard work truly deserves in the right way. And let me tell you, let me tell you a very quick story. It's probably about two years into my entrepreneurial journey, and we took about 2012-ish, something like that. And my accountant at the time kind of pulled me into their office and said, hey, look, you know, I've got a real quick question for you. We need to sit down and go over the cost because I kind of feel like they're kind of getting out of control. And, you know, uh, we're growing quickly and everything, but I really feel that we need to look at our P&L together and figure out what's going on. And I looked at it with a really, really blank face. And in corporate, I was all over it like a rash. And I'd be trimming the fat, so to speak, in every place that I could find to make more money. You see, the reason that I wasn't over my profit and loss statement was I was just like probably 99% of the entrepreneurs in their infancy of building a business. 
uh, you know, five or six years or so. Uh, and it wasn't really, I wasn't really interested in the numbers apart from the income and whether I kind of had enough money to pay the mortgage. All I was focused on was genuinely, actually just bringing in as much new business and having that recurring business as much as physically possible. I was marketing, I was selling, I just was interested to see how many post-it notes we bought, or how much money we spent on photos, business cards, graphics, websites, stuff like that. I wasn't actually interested in any of that. But a few hours later, after going through several of our, you know, the last like, four quarters, five or six worth of quarters of P&Ls, it was very, very clear to me that we were spending money in areas of that business that we just didn't need to be spending at all, or we could drastically cut back. And obviously, that led to us having more money in the bank, because I was much more tuned in to what our business was doing, not only in terms of income, but also outcome. So there's a reason, there's a method to this madness here, right in terms of asking you all of these questions. So let's have a quick recap here, a real, real quick one. So just so we know where we are, okay? It's so number one, what's your business? Number two, what's your current revenue model? Number three, what's your per perfect even, your perfect customer look like? Number four, how much money did you bring in this year? What was the percentage of that in terms of your online sales? Hey, what did you bring in from online products and services that you offered? Number five, what were your total costs for the year? And then number six, what were your top three cost sources? The reason why we look at this is because we want to be able to cut back on costs as much as we can. All right, just take a little bit of a break, just for a minute. You're listening to the Your Best Kept Business Secret Podcast. Helping small businesses like you, getting the business your hard work truly deserves. For more news, interviews, practical ideas, thoughts, and strategies that really work and help you get the business you deserve, visit bestkeptbusinesssecret.co.uk. Okay, so number seven and eight. Okay, so we're going to zoom in a little bit on terms of our online activities in terms of marketing. Okay, so the first thing here is how many email subscribers do you have? Now, I want you to pause this episode right now, log into your email software and find out exactly how many active members you've got on your email list. And the reason I want you to record that is because you've got to be looking at this number every month, particularly if you're paying out in ad revenue in some way, shape or form. You see, email is still without a doubt the number one income generating source for business. And I know it's the same for pretty much everybody that I talk to that's building a business online. The reason why is because there is no noise. It's quiet. There's no sidebar in an email. You can get into people's inboxes and they will read their email if they're interested to hear from you. Obviously, right. So email, without a doubt, going into 2021, should be your number one focus in online marketing, right? It is gr a great to use social media platforms and YouTube and Facebook and all that sort of stuff. Use them for what they are, which are platforms to help you spread your message. But if you're not pe bringing people back to your hub, your own real estate, the platform that you own, in other words, your website, and getting those people to actually opt into your email list, you're going to lose. It could be a slow journey to that loss, but you are going to lose, believe me. So there you go. Number seven, how many email subscribers do you currently have on the books? Now, number eight is also a look at your three biggest traffic sources to your website, right? You can do this via Google Analytics. You just sign in and find out where your traffic is coming from. Now, if you've been in this business for a while and you've been creating content and publishing it on your own domain for a while, it's very likely that your number one traffic source is going to be, after obviously, what they would classify as dire, is actually direct traffic coming probably nine times out of 10 from links in your emails, probably straight to your, to your website. So that's gonna be number one, pretty much all the time. Number two is likely to be search results. Okay, so we kind of expect that to a certain degree and we can push that to one side. It's everything after that that you should be really interested in. So what are your three biggest traffic sources after that? Interestingly, a few years ago when I looked at this, really interesting to see that Facebook was bringing more traffic to my website at markford.uk. Then it was Twitter and then it was YouTube. Now, 
it's being turned around because there is so much noise on Facebook and Twitter and YouTube is starting to get the hits. So this is the reason why we need to look at these numbers is to make sure where we're expelling our energy. Now, that obviously is, you know, you want that return on investment to be worthwhile. Otherwise, we're kind of just like spinning our wheels and making a lot of noise for nobody to see it. So there you go. Number eight is to look at those three big traffic sources this year. And obviously, whatever is working, you want to double down. And whatever is not working, walk away. Simple as that. And then the last two things that I want you to look at are kind of delivering inside your brain cells just a little bit. A bit of personal development fo and focus, and that isn't really something that I've, I've talked much about. But kind of inside the Best Kept Business Secret Mastermind program that we'll be running and will continue to run in 2021, we'll have a real focus on three big things every 90 days when you're setting your goals. And we're going to have a 90 day intent planner that people will fill out their 90 day intent goals for the entire next quarter. Now it'll be broken up into three, three main sections of sales, marketing and personal development and legacy and impact. So this is honestly the time I really do delve deep into personal development on a regular basis. And it's because it's there and it's important, but we've got to be in tune with who we are, what we're doing, you know, and kind of what we're struggling with which leads me onto number nine of this list which is what have been your biggest struggles this year what have you been stumbling over in the last year apart from my words during this podcast but nine times out of ten once you actually write these things down it becomes a lot easier for yourself to actually do whatever you need to do to make whatever moves you need to make to make sure that you don't carry on struggling with these things because here's the thing this is a news flash for you if you carry on struggling with the things you've struggled with this year going into next year you're a bit of a knob honestly why do it you'll look at this and most of it can probably be delegated delegate some of the stuff you're struggling with you may not be able to delegate all of it you just have to figure out whether it's what you want to carry on doing or not but whatever it is you can't carry on otherwise you just remain struggling and that's not going to help you develop as a business owner at all now that leads me nicely onto the 10th thing number 10 who do you want in your team and can how even and how can they help you grow your business now something else to write down now now you're starting to get a clearer picture of what next year actually looks like i think it's important to look at bridging the gap between stressed out overworked entrepreneurs and experienced experts or virtual assistants in building your business it's all about teamwork i'm still all about building a team of people that can help you get the business that your hard work, skills and gifts truly deserve. Other people have begun to help me, particularly with my, my personal brand management, online with social media and even this podcast and my video and everything I do in terms of managing the websites and, and everything. I don't do all of that stuff on my own anymore. My time is much better spent on serving you or creating content that I know can serve you and help you in solving your problems rather than, you know, farting about with Canva or Audacity. So what have you got on your list? And some of it might actually be attached to that struggle list that you just put together a little bit earlier. What have you got? What tasks are there that you can ultimately start delegating? You've been handling them, maybe even struggling with them. Maybe you've been doing sort of okay with them, but you know, you can free up more time if you're not doing them yourself. So you can spend more time on more important high-end activities for you and your business, right? So what have you been doing? What's on that list? And what can you ultimately start delegating? Now this is gonna turn into a bit of a blueprint so that you can figure out how to maximize your time going into 2021 as well. And I understand, you know, as we wrap up here, the understand that time truly is the most valuable commodity as an entrepreneur. There is absolutely nothing more important in your day-to-day -day activities than managing your time. Honestly, if you're not spending your time in the right way or investing your time in the right way, your business is going to be affected badly. It really is that simple. Remember, either you run the day 
or the day runs you. And that is it. Let me just go ahead and remind you that the doors, the next year's mastermind, our mastermind coaching group, the doors are well and truly flung open. So you can head over to markforward.uk to find out a little bit more about what's been part of the group in 2021 can do for you and your business. In fact, here's a stat for you, and I've looked into this. It's a real quick fact for you. 80% of our members, their goals, they are achieving their goals every single month. 80% of people are achieving their goals every month because the focus is on you. It's on the clarity you need as a business owner, but most importantly, it's on the growth that I know you all want to achieve going into next year. Let's not beat around the bush. 2021 is a very important year and should be taken seriously. So go to markford.uk, go check it out. I hope to see you on the inside next year. I will be back again soon. Go out, be brilliant, take care.